Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 52 of Direwolf20 server play series. Uh, let's get back to our nuclear reactor build. Yep, uh, just to refresh what we worked on last episode. Um, while I'm running over there, I'll tell you that uh, Alex, Soren, and Neptune are on the server. King Lemming on TeamSpeak with us. And I think Strong Bad's still hanging around, maybe? Yes, I am. You've been awfully quiet, man. <laughs> Sorry, I'll talk more. Good man. So, uh, yeah, you can see that I've turned off my nuclear reactor. You can see all the components have quickly cooled down. Uh, that's one of the nice benefits about using the overclocked heat vents. They cool off pretty quickly. But like I said, they can absorb more heat than they can cool um, in a given tick. So be aware that you might overheat them and destroy them. But hopefully not with this design. Um, I did cool this off, uh, switched it off because I wanted to just stop it until I came back to this episode. So you can see we've got a decent amount of power built up here. Looks like we got about, well, two and a quarter million EU. Not bad. Almost full, or, you know, two and a quarter. Yeah, not bad. About 25% of that MFSU is full. So this episode, we're going to get into some nuclear control and monitoring for these things. Uh, we're going to build some basic thermometers. We're going to build some remote sensors and a bunch of other cool things to help monitor this situation. We'll probably build some red power lamps and lights to, uh, you know, monitor when the thing is on or off. And even some kind of logic built in to make sure it can't overheat. Like we'll have some kind of, you know you know, heat detection and all this other crazy stuff. So uh, why don't I get started getting situated, figure out all the stuff I need to do, and then I'll be back. All right, see you in a bit. All right, guys, uh, just showing up here, ready to get the first item from uh, the, the nuclear control add-on here. Let's do it right in here. Sounds like a good spot. I'm going to make myself a digital thermometer. This thing will take the temperature of a nuclear reactor and tell us how hot it is. So I just need uh, a little bit more redstone, as a matter of fact. It's a good thing I have my quarry running. User joined your channel. Hey, who's that? Me. Hey, Flora, what's up? Not much. In a singing mood, I see. I'm recording, by the way. Okay, hello, you too. How are you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm building a nuclear reactor still. Fun. Yeah, you should come on to the Forgecraft server and hang out or check it out. I know nothing about nuclear reactors. They're still pretty to look at, in a sense. It's okay. You lost me several episodes ago. Yeah. It's kind of hard to jump into episode 50, though, Strong Bad. You have to kind of start from the beginning. Oh, dear. <laughs> the very beginning. Yes. So now I've got my uh, thermometer. And we can see that uh, there's no heat on the hole, which is good. Now, if I flip this guy on, we should start to see a bunch of heat getting distributed between the hole and the components in here. And you can see the components starting to take heat damage, which is exactly what we want to see happen. And don't worry, the heat vents can dissipate their heat uh, rather quickly for us. And we'll start to see that the hole is not heating up, which is a good sign. It means, you know, all the heat's going into the components. But we'll let this run for a few minutes. And while that's happening, uh, I'm going to come back over in this direction and create probably my first remote sensor and uh, maybe a monitor block for the thermal uh, heat stuff. So what do we got here? I want to create a remote sensor kit. And for that, I'm going to need another one of these digital thermometers, a frequency transmitter, and some paper. OK, I think I can handle that. Uh, paper. I should have something along the lines that can get me paper. Nope. That's all right. I know a place to go get paper. My greenhouse. I haven't been over to visit these. I think we updated Thomcraft, and then when that happened, my uh, little golems died, which makes me very sad. But I have a bunch of components here and a bunch of items that I get to pull out of this chest whenever I need. And then I'll lock the door behind me so no one else can get in. Ha ha. Poor golems. Yeah, they all died. I blame Thomcraft updates. And uh, electronic circuit. All right, that's not so bad. Over here, I can get an electronic circuit. Might as well get another one. I'm going to need it. Only thing about the conduit is uh, I can't, you can't tell if power's flowing through it. Uh, yeah. Suggestion, if you haven't already thought of it, can you make the redstone portion of the conduit glow brighter if it has power? Um, 
The problem with that is you get into it's an animation, it's per tile, it's packet spam. Oh, I was just thinking, just you know, have a. I guess it is kind of. It it actually I just, does glow. It gives off light level seven. I meant visual glow. Just have it so yeah, it's a, no. a brighter red, and when it has power, then I mean, just leave it the exact um, same. Just change its tint. We can probably do that. That's generally the way that kind of it works. If it's hooked up to, to anything producing power, it's got power. Yeah, it's just you know, I'm just looking for a visual way so I don't have to come here and look see if my engines are working. Right. I can understand that. Yeah, we're we'll working on it. The render is by far the worst part of Minecraft. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah truth if that. you're worried about it, like, I know, like, what a couple people have done in the past, and maybe it's something you can do. Well, I guess you'd still have to transmit the information, right? But maybe if you want to save their, like, frame rate, you could always just make it a config setting or something, right? Well, yeah, but we're still worried about the, the actual ne necessity of sending the packet to the players. Right, yeah, the packets are the thing you're more concerned about, I know. Yeah, I mean, I don't care if individual people lag. I mean, because that is that is secondary compared to the server getting wrecked. Right. Because yeah, I know thermal expansion, you guys are really concerned with, uh, you know, not overdoing it. So, got a question. How do I charge this thing? Plug it in. And there's a conduit next to it, right? Yep. Whack it with a wrench so that the arrow is pointing in. Ah, yeah. I need your I need your funky special blue wrench nope. thingy. Any build craft wrench. So I'm using the remote sensor kit here, guys. By the way, um, I'm gonna put down I think probably like over here somewhere. I haven't decided exactly where I want to put it. Uh, this nifty little tool, the industrial information panel. I can uh, apply a redstone signal to turn this on, which I'll be doing in just a moment. And uh, yeah, I just have to put a remote sensor kit on my nuclear reactor, like so. And you can see it mounted the remote sensor on the reactor and gave me a location card, which I can use to monitor that nuclear reactor. You can see it tells me the XYZ coordinates of the nuclear reactor on the card. And by hooking this guy in here, um, I call this uh, middle reactor. Okay, um, do I have to connect cool. the conduit directly to the engines, no wooden pipes? Yep. Hey look, no it's hooked pipe. up. How nice is that? So we can see awesome. the current temperature is zero. The max heat that it can get up to is 10,000 before it explodes. Um, again, you can boost that by putting some items inside. Uh, the melting point of any water nearby is 8,500. And uh, output 64 EU protect? That's not accurate. I need to get an industrial information extender panel here. So I just need a little bit more lime dye and some wood. Um, do I have the stuff with me for that? Yeah, I do. I've got some of that. I think I can make a few of these, right? Okay, that means I can actually hook up the rest of my engine so I can keep charging these things. So real easy, just add your industrial information panels here and boom! Ta-da! Nice. Why is it still saying 64 EU per tick? That's like totally not right. Lame. Definitely not putting more than that. Dude, what happens if I take out one of the quad things? No, I don't know. Maybe it's missing a zero in there or something? Did you take a quad thingy out? Now it's 44. Now it's 44 right now? Yeah, I think it's missing a zero. <laughs> <laughs> So this is definitely outputting, uh, you know, 640, not 64. But you can see how much time is left on the reactor. Uh, that's pretty good. So that's a good way to check out the current temperature of uh, this big guy. Now, beyond that, we're probably going to want to set up some kind of automation to make sure it doesn't overheat. Um, so applying a redstone signal here so far has been done with a lever on the machine. That's not going to be the way we're going to stick to it, no. We're going to, of course, get some red alloy wiring and have a little bit of fun with red power stuff. So let's get that going. Now there's another block also that we want to get to kind of monitor the temperature of this thing. So let's see what we can do. Um, 
we want to get. By the way, Factor and Jason guys, I have a suggestion to uh, promote the people wanting to switch to use conduit. Mm -hmm. I need reinforced glass for a thermal monitor. Oh Wait, my. I think you're getting mod confused here. You mean TE, right? Or yeah, thermal expansion. Uh, yeah. Promote, uh, make a recipe for melting the. Um, Already thought about it. Gold pipes down the root. <laughs> oh, <I> no, said... <laughs> we we thought about it. Not gonna do it because that's basically. No, I like Buildcraft. I don't want to do that. Oh, I like Buildcraft too. I use it for a lot of stuff, but. <laughs> no, that that's kind of like if I put in a recipe that the you can put a macerator in a pulverizer and get some of the stuff back. That would be fun. I, I don't I don't want to do that. That's I don't know what would happen. I think you get a spring or gear back or something. Maybe a circuit, but I mean, yeah, the point is we're not really out to obsolete mod. The, the uh, I know. Actually, I know. Uh, it's actually balanced with respect to mass It costs a lot more energy to do that stuff. Um, Are you recording now, Dyer? Yeah, I am. That's fine. Fine. No, I think he's pretty publicly said like we're not out to replace mod. Oh no, 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 no. Any other I'm just curious. Yep. Remote thermal monitor. And guess what I need for the remote thermal monitor? Well, let's place it in the world and find out what do I need. Well, we can see there's a spot here for some power to be hooked up to it and another one of these slots for this thing to be hooked up into it. So uh, I do need to get another one of those remote sensor kits. Um, so yeah, we'll be hooking that up pretty soon here. Where's my wrench? I got it on me already, good. So I know King Lemmy's thermal expansion. Who's the other no. one? Zelda. What are you talking about? Yeah, Zelda's the other dev on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I like Where'd he go? He crashed. Yeah. Oh. They're trying I'd to say, him. Yeah, I'm just trying to find someone's on to look at this. I want to see whether or not... I mean, this energy you cell, will, um, will it allow the quarry to pull the energy it needs from the engines first before it sucks up all the energy? Um, the way it will get distributed, the quarry will get power. So don't worry about that. And currently, okay. hook up to 30, I think, is the optimum speed for some reason. Uh, you don't actually have to adjust that. The conduits are smart and know what the quarry User should get. Disconnected from your channel. Okay. So without conduits, you need to adjust it manually. Well, the, actually, the cell is also intelligent. Knows what the quarry should get if it's directly adjacent. Right now, it's just connected to the conduit because I'm just tra trying to charge the cell. Yeah, I mean, you can place the cell directly next to the quarry. It does not matter what the output is set to, uh, because once the quarry hits maximum power, it will give the quarry only exactly what it should get. So, my best way to connect this then would be to actually put the cell by the quarry, have the cell power in the quarry, and then feed the conduit into it so that the conduit is powering just the cell? That will work, or you can do... Um, you can do the cell off the side, um, but it's, yeah, that's that's the best way to just do that. Hey, or Soren. you put the cell in line. Hey, Dyer. Can you bring me a fully charged IC2 battery? Fully What's charged? the best way to pull conduit? Do you have a battery on available somewhere? Uh, just place it. Uh, there might be a recipe ah, in that project wrench. table. Oh, pull, like, yeah, get it up. Uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, sneak click. All right, so how are we doing? Component heat exchanger, overclocked heating vents, and my uranium cells are really not even getting close to the point where they're running out. So let's see. I'm going to turn my reactor off again and see what happens. See how quickly everything starts to cool? So, like, they cool quickly enough, but, you know, I think my uranium cells are just, like, running too fast. I think that's Sweetness. You having fun with those things, Alex? Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're cool, aren't they? I showed them yesterday, and she's like, ah! Want to have, right? Yeah. I mean, they're, you know, they don't transfer to each other, so that's kind no. of... I don't need uh, them to transfer to each other. I just I made four of them, so that way I could be charging uh, some, so I can mo move my quarries around without having to run long cool. lines. Did somebody leave their diamond drill in the FE? I should have had that like that, by the way. Maybe that explains why my top row has been heating faster than my bottom row. 
I'm double checking to see that I didn't. Did somebody leave their who what now? Their diamond drill in my feet. Oh. Oh, thank you, sir. You're very kind. Okay. So I did have a little mistake with my thing there. All right, that should charge up. That should be good. Okay. Remote thermal monitor. I can tell it what temperature to keep an eye on it for um, and adjust it however I want. So I'm going to tell it at like 1,500 or so. Um, 2,500. That sounds like a level. That's pretty good. Like I can even... Zero? Okay. Are you connected or what here, buddy? I don't know what that button does. That's a new button to me. Which one? There's like uh, these little lines in the middle here. This thing should be up and running though and ready to start monitoring this guy. Now that I've adjusted this, I wonder if things are gonna behave a little bit better. Cause I was definitely a little bit off. These components kind of look pretty similar, so it's hard to tell. All right, I'm going to flip this thing back on again. All right, things are getting heat again. Also, how's my power doing? We're also going to have some kind of uh, redstone emission here so that when this MFSU fills up, it'll also automatically turn off the reactor. Haha. -ha. Not too shabby. All right, um, red alloy, let's get it going. One sec. All right, guys, I'll be back in just a few minutes here. Probably going to need a little bit more red alloy wiring and cables and stuff, but I'll take care of that off camera. And uh, I'll be back in just a few minutes. But no, the... And we're back. Um, so I've got this thing set up, and I'm ready to test my remote thermal monitor. Now, the only thing is I have to get this... Um, I have to keep powering this remote thermal monitor. I haven't decided if I want to just like throw a solar panel. Like it just needs one EU per tick from what I recall. So if I just throw a solar panel out there, it should keep it charged. Like obviously I have a nuclear reactor here, but I'm pretty sure this thing probably needs a low voltage current. So I'd have to do all kinds of scaling down. It would probably just be easier to throw a solar on there. But anyway, let's check out what happens. So um, there's no way in the current setup to kind of, you know, turn this thing on, produce EU and produce any amount of heat. So I'm going to do something incredibly dangerous. Uh -oh. Yoink. Look what I took out, Soren. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you should probably go out there right now, because this is really dangerous. I'm not even kidding. Just a second. I want to come watch. <laughs> so this thing will build up heat significantly quickly while it's turned on. Um, yeah, Soren's hiding. Alex is coming. Um, so I've set this guy. I did turn out, determine what this button does here. Notice that... Um, why are you... There we go. Okay, so... Uh, Where's the most dangerous place to stand? Uh, next to me, probably. Okay. All right. So right now, this guy is set up to emit a redstone signal when it's below temperature. Um, if I click the toggle in here, it'll emit a redstone signal when it's above temperature. So I'm going to keep it like this for now. Um, and what so we should see is as soon as the temperature builds up, um, it should turn off the redstone signal. So right here is the most dangerous place to stand? Yeah, precisely. Okay. Right. Yeah, blow it out. So here goes nothing. I'm testing my grab suit. 640 heat. Look at the temperature monitor on the bottom right of my screen. 1920, 2560. So uh -huh. see that it's no longer emitting a redstone signal. It was before. Now, because we took out all the heat vents, okay, the heat exchangers are exchanging the heat um, with the nearby items, but these heat vents here, they aren't doing anything at the moment simply because there's no heat exchangers um, to dump heat into them. So um, this thing has uh, got a lot of heat. You can see it's already starting to steam a little bit. So that's not good. A little bit of smoke coming out. So I'm going to place my heat vents back inside. And the heat exchangers will exchange heat with the hull, the 2560 that's on there now, and start storing uh, the heat in the heat vents, which will then dissipate the heat. Boom. And watch what happens. Note that the redstone signal turned back on as our heat lowers, and our heat's down to zero again. Pretty cool. And I just need to rebalance these things where they were, and everything's happy again. So we've successfully tested this block as connecting. So now I just need to get um, a solar panel or something. Yeah. Let me go make one of those real quick, off camera, and then I'll be back. Uh -huh. Alright guys, I got myself a solar panel. Just one. It's going to sit outside um, and just help charge this little thingy. 
Yay! Yeah, not too bad, right? Hooray. But I'll have to catch you guys my, later. My, so. uh, portal gun. What'd I do with that thing? Oh, right, I put everything in my chest over here. This was my, Bye -bye. uh, I want to clear my inventory Later, Soren. Good night, Soren. User disconnected from your channel. Speaking of, I have to make a gravity gun. We added that to the server, didn't we? Yep, I already made one. Nice. Actually, I, I lied. You have to make uh, a I, di I didn't make a gravity gun. I made a supercharged gravity gun. Oh, did you? Nice. You want a wither star, to, uh, uh, a nether star to make a supercharged? I don't know, do I? That's what you need to make a supercharged. Oh, yeah, don't I? I'm just going to throw a little bit of power in here, and hopefully if everything is right, then we'll see for sure if this is connected. And... See, look, it's not draining. Haha. -ha. See? Maybe it is draining. Why are you draining? Isn't the remote thermal monitor only one of you per tick? Now I feel like I have to double check that that's in fact what it is. Oh, yeah, it's draining. What? The, what the what? All right, I'll be back in a minute. All right, I think it was just using the rechargeable battery first, but I haven't seen this thing drop yet, so I think we're we're in good shape. We'll keep an eye on it though. You don't have enough ender pearls. Who me? Yeah, you. For what? I'm trying to gather all the materials you need for your uh, gravity gun. I'm not gonna make it. Just oh. gonna gather them. Nah, that's okay. Don't worry about it. I'll make it in a future episode or something. All right. So this is step one: heat detection. Uh, if this thing gets too hot, it'll cut the redstone signal. But instead, like, I'm gonna have multiple things here that can turn on and off the redstone signal. Like, I'm gonna be detecting the the energy level of this MFSU. I'm gonna be detecting this. So instead of actually, um, you know, wanting a redstone signal turned on, I want to have a redstone. I want to have the inverse, basically, so that um. Basically, any redstone signal will disable the nuclear reactor, so that if it gets too hot, it'll turn off. If the MFSU is too full, it'll turn off. Um, and then finally, like, a master kill switch lever that'll be outside that'll, like, force it to be off. So, that's gonna have to be done with a uh, red power to not gate, basically. So, uh, I'll be setting that up in just a minute. Ah, uh, and the server crashed. All right, guys, back. Um, we have been having a few server crashes the last uh, few days here. Um, basically, it's been, uh, I, we believe it's a vanilla bug. And uh, we believe that the Mojang guys have sorted it out. And that's going to be a big bug that's fixed in 144, which is coming out tomorrow. So, cool. So, basically, what I'm doing is running a wire around the wall here. I'm probably going to have to bump it through here as well. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. I don't think we have, um, you know, covers that are made of reinforced stone. Probably wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. It would be cool, but we'll see. I might run this outside. I haven't decided what I want to do yet. Probably doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see. So this guy, I want to switch it to the reverse of this mode. So that when it's below temperature, it's not emitting a redstone signal. Okay. Um, but I'm going to have a knot gate right here, I think, maybe, I don't know, where do I want the knot gate? Mm. Good question now, I'm not sure where I want the knot gate to be. I could just have it right up against this thing. Hmm, give me a few minutes to think that one through. It's all yours. Alright guys, Alex is distracting me from my build, but I made a couple more knot gates. So what'd you get for me, Alex? In there? Yep, in that middle project table. Oh, sweet. Gravity gun, supercharged. So, obsidian, diamond, ender pearls. You guys saw my gravity gun spotlight, I hope, right? YouTube? Come on. Gravity gun spotlight? Pretty cool. Uh, gravity gun is neat. <laughs> Where's Richard G when I need him? <laughs> That's not bad. Even on a server with a kind of slowish tick rate like this, I like that. That is pretty cool. And I should be able to, from a distance, grab blocks, right? Nice. 
That's what's up. I can't grab players like that, though, can I? What is going on? Why are we climbing? Are you Hi holding there. on to me with the gravity gun? Yes, I am. Now, what happens if I hold on to you with my gravity gun? Now look up. Ah. I'm not comfortable with this. <laughs> there you go, let you I'm go. Blowing you. I'm pushing you away. <laughs> that is funny. Can I hit you with this? And will it hurt? Uh, me it won't, but you it would. Yeah, probably. Hey, you pulled the... That came out of there. Yeah, I was trying that to put back. it back when you took it. <laughs> Alright. I'm putting this away because it's way too much fun. I'm going to have to shoot some other people with it rather soon, then. Uh, so, yeah, I made a couple more knock gates. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up... Um, basically, I have an option. I can either set up multiple knock gates, like one on each control mechanism, or I need to set up... Hmm. I do have an idea. Well, okay. I figured, a couple ideas. I figured I'd distract you with that. Let, you know, just take a quick break, you know, kind of break the ice type thing. Yeah, a little distraction. Not Nothing too crazy, right? So let's see, what do I want to do here? I do have a good idea. This might work even better with just one knot gate. It's basically going to be like a giant ore system, right? Like any one of these things will disable the, uh, the reactor. What if I ran this like up here? That might not be a bad idea. In fact, I do want to have lights in this room. So where do I want the lights to be? Here and here, like I did in the other room? That might be cool. So maybe that's where I'll run the uh, red alloy wire. And I'll eventually have lights there. Hey, King, this uh, redstone conduit, is it capable of carrying a redstone signal? Not yet. OK. That should work. Nice. Actually, the way we're going to do signaling on those is going to be a little different. Well, I was just thinking of it as a way that uh, if the cell isn't charged, if it can still accept energy and it's connected to redstone conduits, connected up to engines, it can send a redstone signal down to turn the engines on. Yeah, there, there will be a way of doing that sort of control. Cool. Step one, we're just going to get the conduits out and working so that you know, if there's some build craft bugs, purely hypothetically, wouldn't pipes stop working? Hey, that wasn't build craft's fault. <laughs> well, who's ever... <laughs> However it happened, it happened. Other than the fact... The one thing I did like about the uh, build craft stuff is that you could actually see the power in the pipe, you know, the blue line or whatever. I yep. still think it should have filled the pipe for come, you know, a bigger line than just a little tiny line, but... I just kind of like that visual thing. Other Actually, than that, it could have. Since when can I put redstone wire on the side of an MFSU? Red alley wire. You've always been able to. Oh, I can't now. Uh, shift click? Yeah, no. I tried that. It's just not going on it. Come try it. That's... Okay, just a second. I'm getting vanilla redstone to act as a buffer in between. Yeah, tell me I'm crazy. You're crazy. Good, thank you. I appreciate it. Here you go. Try and connect this over here on the MFSU. There you go. Go to town. I just gave you two. Right? You trying to run it up and over? I just want it to connect so that it's like touching it so that this thing can emit a redstone signal. It should actually be working just like that. It's a uh, glitch. It doesn't look like it's connected, but I think it is. No, because it should be emitting a redstone signal right now like that. But you can't... Oh, the, the MFSU should be emitting the signal. Yes. Also, why is it not connecting to the red alloy wire like that. Shouldn't that connect too? Or is that not working? Yes, it should. Oh boy. 
See, I think that wire... Weird, right? Yeah, it's just not connecting at all. That's something we probably should point out to ELO. And this is why RP hasn't been released yet. Because, like, ideally this is going to be emit if full, but, like, for now I put it to emit if empty to test. And it's not working. Yeah, it's right. the redstone isn't connecting to the wire, which is... That's weird, right? Do you have a lever here? I'm screenshotting it. I'll be back well, in a minute, YouTube. I, I actually want to just... All right, YouTube, I am back. Um, looks like there's a little bug with redstone connecting to uh, red alloy wire, and another bug which presents the uh, prevents the red alloy wire from connecting to the MFSU. So I got myself a buffer gate, uh, which will just you know act as a buffer and transmit the redstone signal along. It's kind of like an instant um, redstone uh, repeater. So boom, acts like a buffer. So uh, this guy is currently set to emit if full. Now I'm curious, right? Now that should also Go ahead and do this, 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 and this. Now, here's a question for you. You ready, Alex? You want to test this with me? What? So here's what I'm going to do. Um, my thing is set here. Everything should be on. So I'm going to hook up my not gate is here. So I'm going to connect the red alloy wire like so. There we go. That should okay. turn on when... So when that redstone signal on your side turns off, the reactor should start running, and I'm going to test so it, that with my EU reader. What uh, what state should the MFSU be in? Because I've got a lap uh, ultimate lap pack here. I can either charge or decharge this MFSU with. If you put a little bit of energy in there, right now it's set to um, emit if. Oh, there we go. Look, there it goes. Works. Cool. So it's set to emit if empty right now. So go ahead and drain it for me. Ah, that's alright. I will uh, change it to emit if full. You don't have anything else charging this, do you? Uh, yeah, I have the nuclear reactor charging it. Oh, okay. So right now it's set to emit if full, which is uh, probably a pretty cool setting. Is this MFSU empty? How did this MFSU empty already? I used my lap pack to drain it. Or if oh. the other one's beside it. <laughs> cool. Alright, that makes sense. The one on the left, I mean. I thought I had more energy in there than that. Uh, no, I drained a lap pack, an ultimate lap pack will hold 10 million EU. Oh, you had an empty one. Okay, cool. Go ahead and fill her up for me. The one on the right? I don't know, whichever. Doesn't matter. You know what? I'm thinking we're good. I don't think I want to charge up to a full. But basically what we're going to have here is if the heat gets too high, it should automatically turn off the reactor. I might want to test that now-ish. And I can also now add um, a manual control lever um, right wherever I want. Like I could put it right here. This thing should be able to pass through here. So if I put this here with the lever on, of course, boom. Manual control switch kills the uh, nuclear reactor. Everything shuts off. So we should not be gaining any more power, right? Oh wow, that's um, full. Now you're having fun with your. Uh, oh, you must lab, be, you? you must have this one set to transfer to this one. What's that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So yeah, it looks like it's not used, taking any more power. Yep. So it shouldn't be. Um, but if I hit, turn off the manual kill switch. So this is a manual kill switch right here. I'll have to set up a, a little sign that says as much. Um, if the MFSU fills up, do you have your ultimate lap back on? Or maybe even your gravity chest. Put it in the bottom there. If you put your gravity chest in the bottom, once it fills up this MFSU, it should kill the power. See, look, it killed it. Nice. Now, if you take your gravity chest out, um, it should allow it to start running again. So whenever this MFSU is full, It'll emit a redstone signal, killing the system. And now the, uh, you know, this thing's off. No EU per tick, right? Now it's draining out, and at some point... There we go. Little block update force there. 
Maybe I should put a timer here to force a block update or something. Yeah, that's. I'm thinking that's something we need to point out to the IC2 people because that should update on its own when it changes. I think it might be our low tick rate here. I think the server's tick rate is messing with block updates because LRM's having a similar problem. Yeah, it is only. It is at 13.12. All right, so we're emitting power. We've got a manual kill switch right here. Boom. Um, and we've got automated kill switches with heat and everything else. So I want to test the heat kill switch right now. Um, so it should be running at this point. I'm going to break this thing. Kill switch. This thing's off, right? Yes. Just in case I die. Shouldn't, but you never know. I'm uh, going to need my digital thermometer. I'm going to let this thing run for a few seconds without anything in it. Oh, you know what? It's probably nighttime out, isn't it? Yeah, I should do something about that. I was using solar power, wasn't I? <laughs> Fixed. What a noob I am. Fixed. You should put, like, uh, if you're using solar power for, what, this thing over here? Yeah. I'll fix you that should. either between this episode and next or the next one because I have to wrap up now. It's getting late, and uh, I definitely need to wrap up. So, Direwolf20 signing off on uh, this episode of Direwolf20 Server Play you Series, go, episode 52. Yeah, I just stopped sure. pressing my push to talk. I'm going to mess with this reactor a little bit off camera, and then I'll uh, come back next time and probably wrap up this room. So I hope you guys enjoyed episode 52, and take it easy.